start recording. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the uh, Los Angeles Las Vegas section, uh, E-Town Hall meeting. Uh, so today we have uh, a, a great topic and a wonderful speaker and a wonderful interviewer. Uh, it's, uh, uh, together is a great combination. It's uh, so uh, we'll have fun. Uh, so before that, we have a few words about this uh, uh, AI boy and uh, the uh, logistic. So uh, first of all, the uh, we got a few minutes late, but we'll catch up. Uh, you know, due to technical issue, but now is everything is settled. Uh, so uh, we'll just go a few very quickly about this uh, logistic and AI boy. So uh, thanks a lot. And uh, thanks a lot to the speakers and the interviewer today uh, that uh, we're, we're, we're recording this session and uh, it will be posted after the event. Uh, so if you have any bandwidth issue, please just uh, turn off your, um, uh, uh, you know, any other, if you try to turn on the video, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's okay. And you can also dial in if you have uh, a video issue. Oh, is it okay now? Brad? Yes. Okay, sorry for that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, AIWA, just a very quick, AIWA is a nonprofit organization. Uh, it's a, a professional organization. It's nationwide, but also have international presence. Right now, our president is Mr. Basio Hassan. Uh, executive director is Mr. Daniel Dunbarker. He was actually former NASA manager for DCX, DC, uh, XA for the vertical landing, vertical launch rocket. And uh, our section chair, Dr. Jeffrey Bruchel from Raytheon. And uh, LWA was, uh, 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 came from a merger in 1962 from two distinguished organizations, both founded in the 1920s. One founded by the Bright Brothers on aviation, the other founded by Robert Gardner on rocketry. So it definitely comes with history and uh, uh, very uh, uh, prestigious uh, uh, um, uh, 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 people and uh, history. So uh, there are a lot of benefits joining up uh, AIWA. Uh, you get networking, you know, uh, uh, great opportunities and uh, uh, good for your career and the business opportunities. Membership levels, um, so uh, different levels and uh, you can also once you're a member, you get the opportunity to volunteer uh, in the local chapter and also national. Uh, so these are our wonderful volunteers in our uh, council right now. Uh, people from Raytheon, JPL, uh, our uh, attorney doing aerospace business, education. Uh, so this is just wonderful. Really highly, highly appreciate. Uh, and uh, we have technical committee, committees uh, dealing with many aspects, space systems, space colonization, settlement, those kinds of things, propulsion. Uh, AIWA Engage, once you're a member, you can chat, uh, post things on the uh, AIWA Engage. And they got a daily launch, a lot of insider story, and of course, the monthly Aerospace America, uh, very professional. Um, so it's, uh, AIWA also have national conferences and forums. If you are a member, you got great big discount. And the AIWA, AIWA also publish and the journal and the books and also, you know, uh, foundation for education and awards and uh, a career center. And uh, you can advance your membership, fellow, associate fellow, honorary fellow. Uh, uh, just for example, Miss Queen Shutwell of SpaceX, uh, she advanced from regular member, associate fellow, fellow, now she is honorary fellow. And uh, you have awards, and uh, you, if you do good jobs in your uh, education or your company, uh, a publication, you know, uh, or teaching, you know, uh, it, it's uh, you, you can nominate for, for you know, uh, uh, we encourage you, inspire you, motivate you. Uh, student mem uh, member, you can apply for scholarship, and uh, these are the main um, conferences, national level. And local chapter, Los Angeles, Las Vegas section, uh, as you know, uh, is uh, very blessed with many new companies and also great history like uh, Howard Hughes, uh, you know, those, those kind of people. And of course you have, you know, the new companies uh, and also people have been doing good jobs, you know, uh, so that's really wonderful. 
Um, so keep doing events actually to keep everybody connected each other. Uh, we have online 3D gallery, awards dinner on May 5th, uh, then you, you, you know, uh, virtual reality event, new space mini conference, aircraft safety. Uh, also, we also have a uh, newsletter. Uh, so to you have anything then we can post it uh, and the people, everybody uh, inform and uh, network it together. Okay, so we also post our videos and podcasts online. Uh, so today we're really, really honored to have a, uh, um, well, I always try to ask Mister, but uh, James told me that uh, just just uh, uh, just mention the name. So James Long and uh, 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 James is uh, aerospace defense illustrate illustration artist. Uh, he's also designer, photographic illustrator. He's the owner of his own uh, photo illustration company. He was born in 1955, and uh, he grew up uh, in the idyllic Ohio small town. His father was the head of research for Goodyear, and his mother was an artist and poet. After early studies in history and the politics, he gained a degree uh, in photography and the journalism. He worked in Chicago advertising industry for three decades. Now returned to his small town, uh, small town roots in the mid Midwest, he has built new studio facilities and earned worldwide attention for his commissioned artwork of aerospace, defense, and the science subject. <laughs> His unique skills and experience from the start of the space age to tomorrow's technological wonders uh, give James Wong's illustrations a sense of adventure and emotion. Modern day mythology, which calls to the heart and the essence of our journey to the stars. Um, all right, so then we also have a wonderful book author and uh, moderator recorded or interviewer today uh, as uh, our um, uh, uh, Mr. Rob Pyle. Uh, we have been working to, together a couple of events, and uh, uh, he is also the editor in chief, as you know, the Astro magazine, beautiful magazine, very professional. Um, is, he's wrote several very good books. He has written 20 books, should be more, and uh, on space subject, including Space 2.0, uh, Innovation, the NASA Way, and his most recent book, Techn Technology Highlights 2021 for NASA JPL. Uh, I remember uh, Rod also wrote uh, uh, quite some document with the uh, uh, Johnson Space Center, if I'm right. Uh, he has also written for NASA, Caltech, Wired, uh, Popular Science, Space.com, Life Science, and the World Economic Forum, and the Library of Congress. Rod holds an MA from uh, Stanford University. So without further ado, let's welcome uh, two um, uh, gentlemen uh, with us today. Thank you, Rod and uh, James. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks again. Hello, everybody. It's very good to see you all here. Um, I I heard that Ken that uh, that Ken and Jim had been putting this presentation together and couldn't wait to get involved. So I called Jim and sort of horned my way in here and said, "Hey, don't you want to be interviewed by somebody who loves your stuff?" And he said, "Okay." So so here I am. But the real star of the show today is Jim Vaughn. Uh, Ken, why don't you take down my slide if that's what people are still seeing? And we can see Jim full face or the two of us full face. Um, okay, just a second. Okay. So Jim and I go back, uh, gosh, what now, eight years, Jim? Ten years? Uh, oh, I thought it was 30, 40, 50. Yeah, don't you wish? It only seems yeah. like that long. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we do go back a while. And and you've been a big uh, big help and a big inspiration and, and a, a, a great comrade and ally. Well, and I, I was very lucky to meet you when I did because it was uh, about the time I got much busier writing books than I had been, and just a couple of years before I took over at Astor Magazine, and uh, when those two things occurred, I thought, hey, I know just the guy to communicate everything visually because the stuff I've got is junk, and <laughs> that's when I started to uh to flex jim vaughn's talents to my will which has been really good for me and i hope jim it's been good for you too <laughs> but honestly um you know as a book author one of the challenges we have is covers and often we don't have much control over that because the publishers take control of that uh, a long time ago i started getting put in my contract that i had control over that and the second that happened i started using jim's artwork and then when I took over at Astor Magazine about five years ago, <clears throat> I sort of made an executive declaration to our very small staff and said, guess what? 
we're going to do one kind of cover from now on, and that's going to be Jim Vaughn illustrations. And this isn't just because Jim was a friend or because I thought his artwork was cool, which I do. It's because at its best illustration of any kind, but especially in our area where we have a lot of very technical material to cover, illustration needs to convey an emotion. It needs to tell a story. It needs to take the viewer places. A lot of people do a wonderful job of painting a rocket or a spacecraft or an airplane or a machine of some other kind. And I have endless respect for anybody who can do that. But to bring a sense of storytelling to that and to really talk to people's hearts first and their minds second is a very unusual skill. And it's something that Jim has brought to the table since the first illustration of yours that I saw. And it's a rare and remarkable thing. So I, I, I keep telling you this, but hats off to you, Jim, for for being able to do that. And we're going to talk at more depth about how that came about. Um, I just want to share screen for a moment here before I let you launch into a discussion of what's... Oh, no, that's interesting. Okay. Uh oh. No, that's not what I want. Here we are. Okay. Um, that's not the screen. That's not the droids we're looking for. Yes. I'll get this right. Just give you a moment. Yes. Meanwhile, I'll sing a song. Um, <laughs> Can you do a little bit of a dance? <clears throat> a little An bit Irish of a dance? jig, perhaps? <clears throat> no. Uh, okay. For some reason, it just wants to share this screen, so I'm going to have to shift my graphics, which I will do. Okay. I'm coming right back here. This is what happens when you have a laptop and a, a desktop system combined, and it's not a yes. happy thing. Um, so, okay. This is going to come up now, I swear. Do you want me to... Um, Are you uh, now seeing the James Vaughn photo illustration slide? Yes, and, and the stuff on the side. Excellent. Well, the stuff on the side will just have to be there because oh, okay. it's not in Keynote. All right. So, just but a primer. Can you make that full screen? No. Oh. <laughs> For various reasons that I will go into later. Such this is the, such is the, the, the fate of the artist, right? Actually, yeah. let's see. I, I can do this, though. Let's do this. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not perfect, but better. So this is an illustration by Chesley Bonestell from, I think, the 1940s. It was originally done for Adler Planetarium, as I recall. And this is an example of early space art. And this, Jim, from what we've discussed, was one of your primary motivations, was the work of Chesley Bonestell. Bonestell was active through most of the, of the uh, mid through late 20th century. And along with a small handful of other space artists, kind of gave us our first taste of being able to see visions of other worlds, and in this case, from other worlds, this is Saturn as seen from Titan, in a way that had never been done before. We had had illustrations for Jules Verne novels and so forth, but they tended to be uh, line drawings, pen and ink, and uh, just kind of lockstep with the, with the text of the book. Bonestell... Uh, and a few others, such as Ludak Pesek and a, a handful of other illustrators from the time, really went out on a limb and started to redefine how we looked at things. And I guess kind of set the stage for, for aerospace and space illustration in the 21st century, which has just blossomed remarkably since then. And in an age where almost everything is computer graphics, um, painting style illustration or digital painting can really uh, continues to be a, a very unique area. So I, I thought I'd go from here to <laughs> the obvious next illustration, which you did, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Cassini around Saturn. And this is an example, I mean, besides kind of linking into to the Bonestell picture, this is an example of illustration that shows us, uh, you had various motivations for doing this, but the way I look at it, when I write for JPL and use all the NASA photos that we've all seen a million times in their uh, in their books and, and printed materials, this is an example 
of describing some piece of a mission, which you've done really, really well. Um, so before before I, I, I ask you the questions I'm going to ask you, I just want to frame this, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, sometimes you just want to illustrate a concept or a specific machine or a specific mission like Cassini or a specific type of aircraft, for instance, because Jim also does wonderful aerospace illustration, not just space illustration. Here's a Pan Am. Is this an SST? Yeah, that's the SS proposed SST from the 19, early 1960s. Yeah, that we never got to see. That we never now, got to see, and now now we finally get to see it. Yeah, which and we never will, except thanks to you. Now we've added some elements here, which is a little more drama with the sky, and speed streaks, which you're becoming famous for. Oh, okay. so imparting a sense of motion, but. The last thing I want to show you before I bring Jim in is this. And this really, to me, defines what you do perfectly, which is besides being a wonderful illustration, besides getting a concept across, this tells a really challenging, difficult story in depth in one photograph. This is an ICBM warhead. It's a nuclear bomb, H-bomb, as is, 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 is uh, written on the right. But what really sells the story here is the tricycle. So if we just saw the warhead, uh, you know, normally this illustration would just be a, a, a machine, a warhead, an ice polished warhead. You've shown it post reentry here, um, <laughs> which doesn't last very long before it goes kaboom. Or we'd see a damaged city, or we'd see a picture of Hiroshima, or we'd see a crater or something. But instead, you've told this story from beginning to end with just this little tricycle with the streamers down the handles. There's so much going on here. I could spend 15 minutes just talking about this picture, but this to me really epitomizes your ability to tell a complete story in one simple illustration. So before we go into the space art in more depth, can you tell us a little bit about how this came about and how how you came up with this because this is a really complicated concept there's a lot going on here but it looks simple mm. uh i'm glad you like it uh, i love it how did i come up well okay so i do have a background in photojournalism and so i am kind of trained as a storyteller with with photographs and that's the strength I had when I was doing advertising work. Um, so I learned to take an idea or take a subject and try to reduce it to the most, to the simplest and most elemental uh, parts and um, go straight to the, to the, whole nature of what was trying to be told uh instead of you know futzing around on the outside or or layering it with this or with that um so that's it is as you described my um expression my nightmare my my vision of nuclear war and, uh, you know, it also comes too because it, it, the, I, I'm a child of the Cold War and I, I spent my fair, my fair uh, share of time, you know, hiding underneath my desk and, and actually hiding in my closet during the Cuban Missile Crisis. No and kidding. yeah. Um, and uh, so it, it was a, it was a, a fear and a uh, it's hard to explain what it was like to go through those times of it, when everything is, is fun and happy and you're getting an ice cream cone, but you know, there's impending doom always on the, on the horizon. Um, so yeah, it, it, I try to reduce things to, to their, their most essential elements and um, often try to, to, to think about perhaps what would be a, an unusual approach or something different. Um, and, and that's a lot 
really from my training too and from my years working in advertising. So I'm glad you brought up advertising because I think this is a critical part of the conversation. You know, we talk about space art generally as fine art, but in many cases, especially if you're trying to earn a living at it, it's it's a gig, it's a job, it's fulfilling assignments. So it's wonderful when you could sit down and say, uh, you know, I, I want to paint the Saturn V because I love the Saturn V. But very few people are going to call you up and say, I want a painting of the Saturn V. They're going to call you up and say, I want something contemporary or that concerns my company or that concerns my agency. So um, I think there's a couple of things that work here. One is being able to get your head wrapped around the assignment, whether it's what you had in mind or not. But more critically, I think your background in advertising means a lot in, in your work because uh, you can choose to do a piece of art, whether literal or abstract, but advertising really requires you to tell a story because you've got to sell something, right? right. And uh, so with the client's counting on you to make them a nice illustration, but they're also counting on you to sell a product, and that's not easy to do. So I, I feel like your ad skills, even when, when you're not working for a traditional client, like, you know, let's say... Northrop Grumman or, or, or NASA or the Department of Defense. But every piece of work that you do, I feel, benefits from your background in advertising because that's, I have a background in advertising as well. And you don't have a choice but to, you not only have to tell a story, but it's not like working in television where you can meander around for an hour or movies or you can meander around for two hours. <laughs> If you make a TV commercial, you've got 15 or 30 seconds. If you're doing a, a print ad or an illustration, as you have done thousands of over the years, or a photograph because you were a photographer for a long time, you have to do it right now. First like second. Like you did in this. Yeah. First so, second, right. Yeah. And it and it's it's got to hit the viewer right away, and they're hopefully they're going to have first and second and third reactions such as this wonderful illustration, which when you brought this out, I almost cried. So tell us about the last days of opportunity. Well, again, it's, it, I was thinking about opportunity. I was, I was thinking about this story, thinking about, thinking about it in terms of modern mythology and, and what we were putting into it as, as, sympathetic human beings and and opportunity was our, an extension of us you know operating for us um so far far away um so it 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 just that's what i imagined um it would look like i guess i don't it, it's hard to i so often in talking about pictures i'm at a loss for words and yeah of course, i understand you know, it's, it's, it's like look at the picture instead don't listen well, i was to gonna me. say you've already put the emotions into the picture but let's right. see a little bit what's going on here so we could have had a picture of a dusty opportunity rover end of mission boohoo it's been nice see you later right. you know yeah now now this is a rover that served for i think it was just shy of 15 years if i recall correctly yeah an incredible amount of time yeah and and long after spirit had given up the ghost or the spirit as the case may be <laughs> and the warranty on this thing was supposed to be i think three months so yeah yeah you know, remarkable mission and gosh look the wheels aren't all torn up but that's another story but well they are but you have to look really close well compared to curiosities they're pretty oh, good oh. shape but okay but I, I look at what's going on in this picture and there's a bunch of things happening here so we've got clear sky off to the right we've got the leading edge of a storm there uh, if I can see my cursor here, right, over right. in this area, but then we get into these almost uh, bruise-like colors over here, and you brought the weather down in streaks. There's so there's something dynamic happening here, which is a common theme in your in your imagery. Very rarely uh, is it like this where it's static. There's almost uh -huh. always some kind of motion or implied motion right. either happening or about to happen. So what I get when I look at this is a sense of imminent violence. Mm. And here's this poor little rover looking over its shoulder, like, help me, Dad. 
<laughs> and it's about to be swamped by the storm, which is, of course, probably close to what ended its career. So there's a lot going on here that you dreamt up. And, you know, I don't know what you started with on this one. And I don't know what maybe you can walk us through the process of the image you start with for photo illustration. Right. Right. And then how you move into creating these incredible backgrounds that are a big part of what tell the story. Uh huh. Well, um, I was searching high and low for a, a good reference image um, that would show me what opportunity looked like. Um, and I wanted, I kind of, after looking at a bunch of different pictures of opportunity, um, I had decided on this particular pose. Um, I, I wanted to be close to the ground because opportunity is actually very small compared mm -hmm. to a lot of other probes. So, but I wanted to give him her a, uh, uh, I wanted to make it look big. I wanted to, to, to not have it in, in human scale, but in the scale of the, the, the probe itself of the Rover itself and, and relating to the environment. Um, and, and he, opportunity deserved to have a heroic look and and really that's what this is it's a picture of a dying hero um well said and uh, the background and the colors and those sort of things i'm i often i try to work um with what little i know about a classical art and uh often am, am studying landscapes uh, of of people from the renaissance and that sort of thing um and so I'm putting a lot of that into, into this also in terms of the, the complexity in the sky. And, and that's a really good point because the sky can tell a story just almost all by itself. Uh, like you were talking about, about the, the, the energy we're saying. And, and we're also very familiar with the sky. Uh, so the viewer brings, and, and that's an important thing, that none of this would work unless the viewer brings a lot of their emotion, their anticipation, even if they, they aren't that aware of it um, underneath uh, to, to actually looking at, at the image. So there's a, a, a two things are involved, the viewer and, and the artwork. Um, I also don't like to, to think about this really as fine art because for one thing, fine art is really complicated and you have to have all, you know, all these different um, uh, critics and, and everybody, <laughs> hysteronics and, and you got to go to a lot of cocktail parties and, and be good looking and stuff. Um, these are illustrations and I'm fine with that. In fact, I, I'd rather have it that way because then I, I find, I find the concept of fine art actually very, very restraining. Um, and with this, I can have fun, and I can. I'm I'm very thematic, and I'm telling a story. Um, well, and... excuse me, but but you've often uh, made the point to me that this is photo illustration. So, right, what does that exactly mean for those? I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked it up the other day, and it just barely. It's not really in the dictionaries yet. Yeah, and and it's funny because, of course, I was a photographer for thirty some years or so. And because of the advancing of digital and around uh, around 2000, I began to play around with the digital and um, it opened up, it, it, it just was miraculous. It opened up so many possibilities and, and so much. So my retouching morphed into illustration essentially. I, and, and I was taking photographs and cutting them up and then putting them back together in a different way to adjust for this and that changing the lighting and, and these sort of things. So, uh, and, and now I'm doing illustrations that, that sometimes don't involve really any photography or, or stock photos or things like that. I, I think that photo illustration, um, its strength is the fact that it's, it, it usually is very realistic mm -hmm. or has a realistic feel to it. Um, I used to, I used to try to make everything look you know, look like a photograph. Oh, is that a photograph or a painting? Or, uh, no, I'm not so concerned with that. 
I guess because I'm a little bit more practiced at it. Um, I thought I invented the term and then I found out that somebody wanted me to teach a class in photo illustration. So <laughs> it, it was actually a major. Um, no kidding. At a college. Yeah. Yeah. How about that. And, and of course, you know, they didn't agree with me and you know, whatever, but um, no, it was a lot of fun. And that, that was, uh, it, it was amazing to find, and of course it's, it's the technology and it's the tools and they're just tools, but, but digital, uh, digital computers, um, digital cameras, all this stuff is, is just a huge leap, uh, forward. Uh, and I'm, I'm just always excited about it and, uh, just can't wait to, to start work every day. Well, it doesn't get much better than that. And by the way, for people who haven't seen the spread of Jim's work, because I, I have had the good fortune to have access to a good percentage of it, I think you're up somewhere, last count, about 5,000 images. Okay. Which is a lot. That is a large body of work. Yeah. I mean, I'm at like 19 or 20 books, which I thought, hey, that's a lot. And then I was pawing through your folder the other day, and I thought – this guy's done thousands of illustrations. So I think you just sit and do them all day and night. Um, well, I yes, they do. I had to include this one for two reasons. One, oh. it's the cover of Ad Astra, which Yay. is a magazine of the National Space Society. Yay, print and digital. And you can subscribe at adastramagazine.com. But the important thing here is the illustration. And this was actually something that I think we did for the Apollo 11 book. And then ended up that the publisher insisted on a photo, which upset me greatly but this was and this is something we talked about this is a moment that we never got to see right right when you grew up when jim and i did we were both boys when apollo 11 landed in 1969 and we didn't get to see this this image so apollo 11 landed we waited a while, the door opened, the alarm strong climbs down the ladder. Halfway down, he he pulls on this little handle, and the side of the uh, the, the descent stage of the limb flips down, and there's a TV right. camera there. And we saw, for a while, this upside-down image of him climbing down the ladder, and it was black and white and fuzzy and so forth. And it was a miraculous moment, don't get me wrong, but this is the picture we wanted to see. And right. the only other person yeah. I saw that, that really attempted it to this level of detail was Norman Rockwell, and he did it before the landing, so it wasn't uh, particularly accurate in terms of the spacesuit. Yeah, he had the white on. limb, yeah. the, the, the painted-up variety. And, of course, when the, when the limb finally was unveiled during the Apollo 9 and, and the testing of it in LEO, uh, we were, what is that? Um, put all that goofy tinfoil on. The yeah, well, they're making their stuff out of tinfoil and all that sort of. And, and yeah, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, and I was going to say, I think the only other art, artist major work besides yours and Rockwell's was Paul Calley uh -huh. from that period of time. Uh -huh. But this was a different angle and a different approach. And I was delighted when you sent it over because... And you said it in process, so I got to see it with a slightly older suit design and so forth first, and then you finished it up. But I just felt like between the angle towards the limb and the angle off the ground, which looks to be roughly eye level, I'd say, I just thought it captured perfectly what I wanted to see and what millions of other people, hundreds of millions of other people, wanted to see at that moment on July 20th, 1969. Uh -huh. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you put this one together, because I thought it was really a magnificent piece of work. Well, you brought up and covered a lot of stuff there. Um, I think it, it also is a picture that a lot of people thought they saw. Yeah. In their imaginations, well, when they think yeah. back about it. Yeah. Um, the actual, and, and this is a, another very interesting area that that i navigate is is the difference between what people expect something to look like and what it actually looks like um and and i was thinking about how that that grainy black and white um sort of slowly strobing image of 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 armstrong coming down the ladder and and the fact that it was upside down for the first Right. 10 or so seconds and so and and then 
but it was a view of another world and, and a human being stepping onto another world. And it looked otherworldly. It was weird and strange. And, and at the time I thought, wow, this is, um, this is really out there. Um, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's, it's upside down. Um, yeah, it was hard to tell at first. It was hard to tell at first. And, but we were all glued and, and try, all, all of humanity was glued to their television sets, you know, this far away, trying to figure out what they were seeing. And, and so it was very exciting because it was very alien. And, and you know, um, uh, so, okay, so when I worked on this, I, I bring all that to it. Um, and I, it, it struck me a lot when I, when I watched the, the, the video, the film, the video uh, of, of Armstrong uh, on the surface for that first couple of minutes, he seems to be a little nervous and, and very alone. <laughs> I noticed that he never really takes his hand off the limb. You know, he's sort of like, you know, maneuvering around to this side over here. But he always has that that uh, the gloved hand real close to the, and so I wanted to capture that 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 sense of of loneliness, of emptiness, of um, those things, and and I also struggle a lot with the actual size of the limb and the size of the astronaut in the suit and getting that to look correct and also being fairly accurate about it. Um, and yeah, it, 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 I have to give Rod a compliment here because whenever we talk, he and I talk about my illustrations, he always educates me. Or, or, he's such a good viewer, a good in expressing himself that I, I end up learning some more things about the piece of artwork that I did. Well, it's worth mentioning that I, I went to design school myself and spent probably oh, over the course of four years, $70,000, uh, not becoming accomplished at anything other than being able to understand good work when I see it. Okay. So, well, that, that's that my benefit. Uh, fortunate. Yeah. yeah, for me. So just to, to wrap up and, and uh, you know, we were going to, we got kind of jammed up right, right at, at beginning time because i was having technical issues i was going to talk a little more about more about the origins of your of your career and you're oh. welcome to go in that at any time i'm just i'm so anxious to talk about more of your illustrations yeah go ahead let's, okay. let's look at pictures uh but i think again i think the advertising and your your background as both a fine art and advertising uh, photographer play in here this next one is really important to me because it's become the de facto uh, tr trademark image, if you will, of the National Space Society, because in one illustration without, and this wasn't a commission for the NSS, this was just something you did, in one illustration you managed to capture everything they've been talking about for 40 years. So this is a picture, obviously, of a young woman with a teddy bear in some kind of space station looking out over Earth. It's simple, it's clean, but again, there's a complex story here. Um, generally, when people in the past had talked, you know, groups like NSS, the L5, and so forth, had talked about space settlement, we saw a lot of big metal cans in orbit. <laughs> we saw spaceships, we saw pressure suits, we saw people doing space-like things. But what we were really talking about was people living and working and reproducing in space and living in a shirt sleeve environment because that's the goal of an organization like the NSS and others. And you nailed it all here. She's young. She was probably born up there. And yet she's still rooted in, the, in, in earlier times because she's dragging around this teddy bear. Uh, even down to the point that she's got one sneaker up. <laughs> you know, it's just a wonderful little touch and the hand against the window, which you also did a close up of, which I thought was a great shot. It just tells this this wonderful story of I live here and I'm, I'm looking down at the home planet. 
Um, was this for Asgardia or somebody else? It was for Asgardia. Yeah. Um, and and you know they they are the uh, first space nation. I, I I tell people that Asgardia is is really about an idea. It's not about hardware. And um, they were wonderful to work for um, because they're they're dealing with a, a concept, a project, whatever that, that's going to take centuries to unfold. And so that gave me a license uh, to to do a lot of uh, more. Uh, I don't want to say fantasy, uh, speculative, or you know, the farther out I look the less I'm going to know technically, right? About what's actually going on. Uh, like the big surprise with the LEM, when the LEM finally popped out, it didn't look anything like we thought it was going to look. Right. Um, uh, or or Elon Musk coming you know, out of left field all of a sudden. <laughs> so, uh, but they they encouraged me to go ahead and, and, and look far into the future. And that, of course, was there. This is also was the human side of it um, and the human experience and what that would be like. And um, it, it also brings back the times when I was a little kid and I just used to love to stare out the window and daydream. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that someday we have really big picture windows in our spacecraft. Because why else go? Yeah, well, the cupola is about as far as we've gotten. Now, this is sort of an analog to this image, this next right. one. Right. And it's another one that we've used for a cover, which I love. Um, you know, again, it, so it's a shift from what we've just seen, because now we are back into the tin can, the spacesuit environment. But it's it's a little different than what we normally see. This is a woman who's who's young. Clearly, this is off in the future to some extent. And my impression of this when I first saw it was she's got a job up there. Right. You know, she's not necessarily, quote, just an astronaut, unquote, but she's she's got some kind of assignment she's doing. And we so we see some other astronauts down the lower right uh, leaving the platform down here. So they're off to do something important. Right. And she's either on her way out or coming back. I guess she's on her way out because she's not all sweaty yet. Yeah. Um, but this illustration was inspiring to me and inspiring to some other people. So maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's that. Um, that was a lot of fun because uh, we used it for the an Ad Astra cover. Um, and then um, I got this snapshot uh, from this young girl's dad who had, I sell my work on a, on a site as posters and prints and things like that. And he had gotten his his daughter a print of that. And my goal, you know, you asked me about long term goals. Um, the thing I want to do most is is pass it on, inspire young people like I was inspired as a child and a young person by the illustrations that I'd seen. And and so right there, that's kind of you know my life's goal happening. Uh, and yeah, I just I think that was just so wonderful that uh, he looked me up and and sent that picture to me. So so the picture you're talking about is the lower half with the young right. girl holding out right uh, this printout illustration of somebody that looks like her, and she yeah. probably hasn't seen a lot of people that I mean it actually yeah, the resemblance right. is kind of remarkable. Yeah, but she probably hasn't seen a lot uncanny. of people that look like her in space. Yeah. And yeah. I remember I, I got that and, and we looked at it together and, uh, you know, I'm kind of a sentimental guy anyway, but I, I got a little te teary when I saw that because I thought, yeah. look well, at that. The, and it wasn't even my picture. It was yours. Uh, yeah. And, and that's really, you know, th there's your modern mythology. That's what it comes yes. down to. And, and this is her hero. And, um, you know, she probably wants to grow up and, and be her. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, we, we, one thing is we are talking to a lot of engineers out there, so I do have a lot of hardware stuff that I have done, but but Rod's a uh, uh, anyway. It's fun talking about the the people and and telling the stories and people, of course, are, are 
really important. Um, where am I going? Uh, well, you touched a heart. Right. And I think so much of what you do, and we've talked about this a lot, but I think so much of what you do, I guess that's what makes it remarkable to me is um, you're speaking to hearts first and minds second. And I don't even know if that is deliberately what you're setting out to do all the time. But it gets back to that idea of painting machines. Uh, you know, you can paint a machine to illustrate a concept of, okay, this is what our hypersonic cruise missile is going to look like, mm -hmm. Congress. You should give us money. Right. But you can also paint something that says this is what this machine is going to look like. A uh, cruise missile is a bad example for this one. But this is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to do. It's in motion. It's about to do something wonderful. Or in the case of the opportunity image, it has done something wonderful. Or maybe it's more subtle than that, like this next one, which is a cover that, that I commissioned from you, and you gracefully did, using some uh, the the painting you just saw, but adding elements to it. By the way, our first white cover in probably 10 years, because space is dark, so we always do dark covers, and you put together this wonderful white background, right? which really, I think, struck people, again, on a level that they may not have been able to contextualize verbally, but it's a bright, shining future, and it's a bright, shining future that welcomes everybody, and here we've got three women. This was a, 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 an issue that focused on women in, in space and aerospace. Three women in very different situations together, letting us know that, that they've arrived yes right and and you know i i have always seen space as a a, a new frontier in a place where everybody is going to be there and everybody's going to have a role and um you know i i i really enjoy um expanding and and doing something beyond and different from from just the classic mercury astronauts and and uh you know uh and actually you know when we stop and think about it you hired or or you commissioned a a fashion photographer to do this for you because right. i i did fashion photography for quite a long time and worked for a lot of um department stores and things like that so that's sort of what this is um and it, it was very fun to think about the different um, jobs and the different trades and, and specialties, et cetera, that would be involved and are involved uh, in, in space exploration and, and the people that do it and how they're all basically heroes or, or yeah, you know, uh, yes. I didn't notice before just now that I guess the woman on the left is a welder, huh? Well, let's see. I it's a little in, in, not real sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's a welding outfit, but she no, does I, have she does gloves. have Rosie the Riveter, and she does have gloves. Yeah. Well, you gotta have gloves. I mean, you know. I mean, <laughs> no matter what you do, if you're doing concept building stuff, I mean, I wear gloves all the time. It makes me bigger and stronger. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, keeping with your theme of of modern mythology. There we go. I loved this one, and you gave us a few variations on this, but we had an issue where we were uh, talking about the, the strengths in, in comparing SLS and Starship, and uh, you came up with a couple of covers, but I loved, I think, this one the most because of the dramatic setting, the clouds right. in, in the background. Right. Right. Um, you want to talk about this one a bit? Well, again, it, 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 it draws a lot from classic painting. And, and the kind of thing you would see of, of big temples or big cathedrals, mm -hmm. um, monuments. Um, I was trying to do something that's, that's monumental in size. These things are really big, and uh, you, it's very hard to get a sense of that from normal illustrations or photographs. Um, and uh, I, it just seemed like an obvious thing. Let's put them side by side. And... and you know, I, I doing some research and oh, the the VAB, the Vertical Assembly Building there at Cape Kennedy, uh, was constructed with the idea of mind in mind of building more than one Saturn V at a time. So, you know, let's have them both get built inside the VAB. You know, what else have you got? 
that's a big building. We'll build build our rocket there. Uh, so that yeah, I enjoy that. That's been very popular. Uh, Has it? Yeah, it's it's one of my most popular illustrations so far. I think it, it it's without getting into the the subject matter too much. It's it's interesting that you managed to make the uh, SLS look a little, little on the puny side. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, that's, that's perspective and, you know, accuracy well, there. Yeah. And, and, and Starship is a little taller, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well over the size. And it's big on the top where, where, you know, yeah. SLS is more the traditional shape. Um, yeah. You know, this is another, uh, I, I am so happy and so excited that we have a, a rocket ship that's silver with big fins on it. I mean, finally, <laughs> it it's looks the, so much like like rocket ship XM from. Yeah, the, exactly, the, exactly. Which, uh, uh, I, I used to pick up a slide of, but I used to tell people, hey, you know, just put some paper mache wings on it or something, just for when you trot it out and show it to people. <laughs> they can come off in the first thirty seconds of launch and tell them it's planned or something. But, but, you know, but it would give them such a moment at rollout, right? That's right. That's right. So I'm going to switch gears here. This is another illustration you did that tickled me when I saw it um, because it's so unexpected. Okay. Right? I mean, it, it's a picture that we might see on any given Sunday in a, a department store restaurant or something of the past. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but in a really unusual setting. So the ladies are, having tea. Ordinary yeah. people in extraordinary circumstances. What in was low the Earth orbit. of this? And she's holding, by the way, a picture of Buzz Aldrin. Yes. Which is fun. Looking so, back, I, I, I think, you know, talking about an old heartthrob or something. Was, um, this, uh, was this for Asgardia? No, actually, this this I did on my own. And, and I need to point out that a lot of my imagery I do on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, because I love doing it. Number two, because there's a lot of experimenting and, and learning. I'm always learning. And I'm I never seem to be getting the same assignment twice in a row. And, and also, you know, if you want to be the best cellist or violinist, you don't just play a gig. You know, you don't just play when you get a gig and you're getting paid. You, you, you play, you practice all the time. That's how you get good. Uh, so anyway, I, I am a big fan of Norman Rockwell and much to the horror of my fine art friends. And, and, uh, they make always make this certain face. Anyhow, right. uh, and and in my photography and my advertising work, I did a lot of sort of pseudo Norman Rockwell kinds of things. So this was sort of like a challenge to myself to, to, to take Norman Rock, Rockwell into orbit uh, and to come up with also sort of the, I think there was some there was something from Escardia where they were talking about showing normal normal things going on and uh i went through a list of what was very normal and like you said i kind of remembered back in the day with the the, the ladies having tea at the at the department store uh tea room sort of thing um so th that's that's sort of the nature of that and somehow those those ladies on the side uh, you know they're they're twins or they're closely related no they're twins I was just uh, noticing that, yeah. Yeah, they're twins, and they're advising probably their their uh, uh, she's probably a niece or something uh, about saying, life. Never date an astronaut. Never date an astronaut, exactly. But he was so beautiful. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it just it's a, it's fun, and and uh, it you know I mean just imagine how th this would be a nice scene in a movie, you know. Mm -hmm. In a, mm -hmm. in a sci-fi movie or something. So the next one, when I saw it, I thought, oh, you dirty dog, this is a low blow. And not that you meant it that way, but it got me right in the gut. And this is a picture of Gene Cernan, our recently uh -huh. departed last man on the moon, who, who left us uh, about, what, two years ago, I guess? Three years ago? Something like that. Um, and... You know, he's not looking at the moon, but he's looking up and you're giving us the moon in the background. 
he was the last person there. I mean, there's a lot going on here, but but mainly it just hit me as being incredibly sentimental and respectful of his his role in the space race. Yes, and uh, the these are heroic people. Um, not only what they've done, but how they've done it and, and what's involved. Um, uh, and, but they're people, they're human beings. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I like to bring, uh, when I'm doing the portrait, uh, I like to bring, um, other stuff to it. Uh, I like the fact that he's looking up and out beyond the moon, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it you know, uh, it's funny because if I'm doing a portrait of someone who has died recently, uh, which was kind of what was going on for a while, uh, it, it, it was sad and, but I didn't want it to be sad. So, uh, I wanted it to be hopeful. And, and there's also the question of, do, do I want to show the person, uh, as they were, uh, or as they, they are now. And, and so it was a nice kind of blending of that to, to show the, the much older retired Gene Cernan, but he's mm -hmm. still in the, in the, in the moon EVA suit. Well, and, and that's a good point because it's not something we'd see, especially right. because it looks like that suit's already been out in the lunar dust. Right. But I thought that's what made it so remarkable. Yeah. Is that it's just this bending of time. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but this was a, a cover I'd asked you to comp up for a book, which ended up right. getting a cover that was about publishers uh, <clears throat> 100,000 times less attractive, thanks to the publisher. Um, but you're going to get in a, trouble. Be careful. Uh, they're out of business. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, okay. See, they, they, yeah. did, they didn't follow our advice. They went out of business. Well, you know. They, they didn't buy enough of your covers. Um, but I loved this illustration of Armstrong you did. And it's, I think part of what's remarkable about it is that if you studied Neil Armstrong, and I didn't know him personally, but I, of course, like a lot of us, had, had read tons and tons about him and seen interview after interview. Uh -huh. This is this kind of sphinx-like expression he had a lot of the time, which is, I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. And in this case, we assume he's looking out the lunar landscape, but he's not given us much, which means we we fill in what he's feeling and thinking. And I yeah. think you did that on purpose. Well, he's looking at us. He's looking at the viewer. He's looking at you. Mm. And, and is this he disappointed is... in me? No. Okay. He's he's <laughs> he's happy. You remember the human race, and and he's come in peace. Uh, <laughs> Again, I wanted to show something that we might have thought we saw, but we, we never really did. And the whole time that Neil and Buzz were on the surface, it, at least from what we saw in photographs, the, the gold-plated part of the helmet visor is slid down uh, to protect them from the really bright sunlight. Now, right. This is uh, could be what he's over in the shade of the, of the limb or something. Um, but I, I thought... Wow, you know, we've never actually seen them. We we see these space suited figures, but they're very alien. Um and yeah, he's kind of a I don't want to say a mysterious character, but he it, you know, talking about modern mythology and heroes and that sort of thing. I, I always felt like Neil Armstrong was was so wonderfully appropriate as the first human being. Mm -hmm. uh to go to a planet because he was he was so um otherworldly <laughs> it was kind of enigmatic and, and i guess for a lot of us it allowed us to kind of paint our emotions and our reactions into him because he yeah. wasn't giving us a lot that way well he's he's basically a good ohio kid who was doing his job yeah and you not know, by the way Scout, you know. the guy that was portrayed in first man don't want to go on a rant here, but okay. I saw that movie, thought the effects were great. Uh, a little weird that, that all the spacecraft looked like they had been, uh, the Gemini spacecraft looked like it, it been, had flown through World War II when it was brand it new. Bought it from the back of a used car lot, yeah. Yeah, but but Armstrong, 
you know, in that film, as not portrayed here, was kind of stumbling around the moon and he's depressed he was, and he's know, sad whitey. about his daughter and all yeah, that. Really. And if you listen to that spacewalk, he was giddy. He was having a great time. Yeah. He was, you know, what you portrayed here, not not wandering around the moon trying to figure out where he's going to throw his daughter's bracelet, which he probably didn't do. Right. So, um, sorry, that that is neither here nor there. Um, this is an image that you sent me a couple of years ago, which I've 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 not yet used in the magazine. Although, I, uh, no, actually, I think we did. We used it for an article spread, but I just uh, I I love it on a couple of levels. I guess mainly because we've got serious young Mister McMurphy here looking off into the future, and uh, your your particularly talented use of I, I, Iris refraction in the background uh-huh <laughs> which i felt like jay if, if jj abrams had commissioned this image this is what he'd do yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. he's but, blown it now for us you know, there's too much well, flair yeah uh, but, you, but you use it well and you. it's not something we see very often in this kind of artwork thank you um and well that's that's part of part of making it look real quote unquote um, is there's a lot of different elements, a lot of things that go in there to make something um, really make sense to your heart and your mind. And, mm -hmm. and of course, they both work together. And, and seeing is a emotional act. It's a, it's a, we can't, we can't divide our feelings from what we're seeing. It, they're connected very, very much. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's basically why I want, you know, all these pictures to look really cool, mm -hmm. to look, to be exciting, to be something, to be a story, to be something you want to look at and, and get your imagination, the viewer's imagination going. Um, yeah, I like that picture a lot. Well, speaking of cool, Another one of my favorites, which was a we ended up using as a cover shot as well. Buzz, wonderful shot of Buzz, and you did a couple of renditions of this uh -huh. uh, in, in different. I don't want to say scales, I guess, but orientations where you had more background and slightly different backgrounds, which I I loved all of them. But uh, we sent this to Buzz. He was he was thrilled to get it, and uh, we used it uh, on the cover of the interview we did with him on his twentieth uh -huh. birthday in Ad Astra, but. I just, I don't know. It, 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 again, you've taken the buzz of today, put him in the suit of tomorrow, although it does harken back to his Apollo days, on Mars. What, what inspired you to do this? It was just, it, it really, I, I got such a kick out of it when I saw it. And I can't even, for once, I'm at a loss for words. I just loved it because I loved it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the, it's buzz at his happiest. I mean, this is the ultimate where buzz would want to be uh and he gets to be there and you can you can see that joy on his face and that wonder and uh you know he's in his he's in his home element yeah um you know he'd rather call mars home you you can tell you know he's tired of sitting in that easy chair and he, he wants to climb into a rocket and, you know uh get a secondhand trailer and, and move to uh <laughs> planaria whatever you know Price on mars yeah yeah uh he, even though he apparently had to put his first name in with a felt tip marking pen <laughs> yeah well <laughs> and he for, for would do that right it. he would do that yeah. give me give me right a give me and, a, and he'd yeah. do it with the with the felt tip pen that he used to reset the breaker on apollo 11 for that's Cam right out here that's right um we aren't gonna get out of here unless i reset this breaker was this yeah. uh was this a commission or just something you did uh, well, I thought it came from you. Did it? Oh, I thought you, I thought you had already done it, and I maybe saw I it did and got all excited. I think you just did it on on your own as a flyer. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, that, yeah, again, that's the fun part is that the 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 meshing of my quote personal work and and commercial stuff. I did, by the way, for this one because we are doing it in a public forum. Have to go to NASA to get permission to use the meatball logo and it took about three weeks 
they were kind of chewing on it like and the guy actually wrote back and said you know we're having a little trouble with this one because it, it, we haven't encountered this before he said it's got the past it's got the, the present it's got the future and he's uh, in the final analysis they said it's, and this is all on, on rights and permissions to use the logo i should point out he said you know what it's based in in a future fantasy so we're good with it and i said thank you you should be okay because it's yeah. buzz for i didn't know that story yeah yeah it, um, you, we're obligated to show it in a good light basically is, is what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, exactly. Tell me about this one. Cause this again is very sentimental. And if you ever met Chris Kraft, I interviewed him for a couple of hours once. This is him. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just, uh, he had recently passed away and, uh, there was a, a, a I was surprised at the amount of, uh, of, emotion and feeling of loss and, and fondness for this man uh, who was often sort of behind the scenes uh, making everything happen uh, and a driving force in the early space program. Um, and I just, that's what came out. Um, Again, you used a white background here with nothing in it, which I right. thought was, was remarkable because it, 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 it's although you do see reflected in his glasses exactly control, which i think is really clever but because the background is kind of abstract it really makes us focus on not just the image of of craft but wonder what he's thinking what he's looking at i mean obviously this isn't the landing of apollo 11 because he's probably in his 70s or 80s but that's what we're feeling from it right 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 you know, he's not in a nursing home looking at the, the, the panel on his his life monitoring machine. <laughs> he's back in Mission Control as back an older Mission man. Control, yeah. Reliving those moments. And I thought, right. again, what a wonderful mashup of time and space you've done. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a good way to put it. And, yeah, um, I can't think of a, a clever saying, but, but well, it I guess. For itself. Right. Thank you. This doesn't, however. What possessed you to put a Werner von Braun era spacecraft on? I love it. I just, I, I love mm -hmm. that old, old. I guess they would call it steampunk today. Yeah. But the the old battleship, uh, submarine sort of engineering, of you know they're going into space. Of course, it'll be like a, a ship. A, right. A submarine probably, um, and you know good good design endures it, there's a lot of reasons that could be a practical uh design it's got some modernized it's got a canada arm one or two of those on there yes. uh and it, it just it again it goes right back to bonestell and mm -hmm. your opening picture it's almost it's the same scene except that there's a spacecraft in it well, except you added a couple of things that Bonestell would not have done. My favorite of which, and you've done this in a couple, you've done a series of these that are related, is this little dramatic moment down here of the astronaut in the spot, right. spotlight. Right. That for me, there's another one you did with a with a, a blue background, was really what made this pop. Was this lone astronaut out there in the spotlight, right, walking towards us? Um, it's it's just it, again, it's one of those little things that that really makes it sing on an emotional level. Uh, you could have just painted a machine and, and we do have a couple others out here, but, but this guy here or woman, whatever he is, um, it just Figure. made the moment remarkable. Yeah. And I really, I, I loved that. And of course, as you say, the kind of steampunk or space punk or whatever you want to call it moment here. Um, we're uh, coming up on Q and a time. So I just want to get through a few more. Okay. This you did, as I recall, because I called you extremely frustrated while I was working on a contract at JPL writing a technology highlights book for them. And we had this, um, how can I be kind, awful illustration that NASA had commissioned of a Europa lander that it just wasn't good. It, it, uh -huh. it, it looked like something from a seventh grade art project. Don't know where they got it. Don't know why they got it. It was the only one we had, and I really wanted something better. You gave us this, and as I recall, they ended up not using either one, which I was pretty upset about, but I love this illustration. 
And you do. I didn't know that. Um, but okay. I, I like it too. It's, uh, you had mentioned sort of, uh, it, it, it has a certain, um, it's, it's very colorful. It's, uh, by of, the way, it's an icy moon's lander for people who didn't I, okay, pick right, up right away. Yeah, right. Outer planets. Um, and, uh, I didn't have much to go on. Uh, yeah. and, and so I had to do a lot of, um, my, my small scale engineering sort of concepts. Um, but yeah, I was trying to make it look really cold and, and yet have it be interesting and colorful. Uh, and, and I, I guess because it's so colorful, I kind of haven't paid much attention to it because I, I'm not usually working in a real bright, vivid palette mm -hmm. like that. Um, but now that you like it, I like it better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's funny because you do you, you you do some work and i'm i'm so engrossed in it and it's every I, you know when i when i'm doing uh like i'm doing that illustration i mean i'm getting cold you yeah. know it, it, it you're there you have to be there and of course i'm down in there in the minutiae of the 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 thingamabobs and the whatnots on it and stuff um and uh, i can't remember where i was going um well, you live in Ohio, so it's cold, and that's probably very well, inspiring. If that you're must be. Uh, I, I, I just want to jump to this one because I, this is the one that was selected. Hooray! Right. right. So tell us what happened with this illustration, because this is a remarkable story. Okay. Well, this this uh, this originally was a commissioned piece I did of the James Webb Space Telescope, uh, and I did it as a cover for Science Magazine. And uh, uh, Northrop Grumman provided the uh, the CADs for it uh, that I based um, based some of the imagery on SketchUp's sort of thing. And uh, so recently, um, well, the the post office called and they said they want to make it a stamp. The post office called. The post office. I love how you say that. Eh, I got this call with the post office. They want to make it a, a make it a, a commission for a national nationally recognized project, yeah, so, which is a postage stamp. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, it's coming out in June, and and it'll, so it'll be a, a first class forever stamp. Um, and uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, I, I'm I'm doubly happy because I it's still kind of the best illustration I've seen of the web. Mm -hmm. uh, and ironically everything else is just sort of the basic CAD drawing that I got as the beginning of that right um, but anyway that's cool and, and we I, all thought they were pretty good until we saw yours uh, oh okay yeah. <laughs> well you know somebody asked me about it and, it, 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 and I was looking at the uh, the alternative I don't, I don't know if you even have it up there but um, no the the real I, I was looking at these pictures and, and some video of of the the uh, telescopic mirrors um, being assembled. It was just freaky because they they were so reflective and so good that they made everything really brighter than it appeared to be, and and so that's what I really went for because uh, it was again a strange shape. Who who would expect a space telescope after Hubble and stuff to look like that? Right. Um, but it seemed like the big deal would be that that mirror would be just just amazing to look into because uh, it's it it sees so much and and i wanted to convey that um we're getting into time for q a here so if okay. anybody's got anything they'd like to know please uh drop it in the q a box but until i see one all I see so far is, is the session being recorded, which I assume it is. Um, yeah, it is. I see a little blinking icon down there. Here's a cool image you did from uh, our friends at SpaceX. Yes. I didn't do it for SpaceX, but I did it. Uh, it's it's fan art is what it is. <laughs> is, what it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, and like everybody, I, uh, I was just uh, really 
ecstatic when I when I saw those two boosters come down. Uh, and again, it was one of those things that that uh, boy, you know, it, you you couldn't come up with a better scene out of a 1950s science fiction movie. Um, and here it was, and it, it made sense. It was uh, economical, profitable, and uh, and really happening. Uh, and also, those things are really big. Uh, you, you don't often get, get a sense of how big those falcons are. Uh, but it was, it, you know, it occurred during the daytime. Um, it wasn't uh, the event and the seeing it was amazing, but I thought it could stand some improvement. So <laughs> I, I went ahead and look at reality. Yeah, there we I go. I could make it better. Yeah. Well, look at that fire ring. Is that cool or what? You know? Yeah. And so basically I did it at dusk uh, with, with a, a fun sky and stuff. So, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Okay. I don't see any questions yet, so let's move on to this one. Ah, the X-15. That's an early um, piece I did. And uh, it, it, it was, you had mentioned something about portraying speed. Yes. and. This was going to obviously be a real uh, uh, challenge in terms of, of making uh, things, well, making a painting look like it, it's something that's going really fast. Right. Um, and, you know, it's funny because you watch, watching something go really fast is a whole kind of unique experience. Mm. It, it's something that, that, really depends on something going by really fast <laughs> well but the problem is when you're seeing something really go by fast it goes by really fast so <laughs> you see a flash as opposed to what you're doing here which is right. giving us a still frame that's imparting the idea of speed uh -huh. and you're doing that in a couple of ways you've got this speed streak here you've got the ones back here you've got speed streaks moving forward from the fuselage which right. is kind of interesting you don't see that very often but you're also cleaving the frame uh-huh right. left white space here which right. you know it's a brilliant combination of of tactics i mean do you even know that when you're was this planned or is this just how it comes out while you're while you're painting uh i there was uh, quite a bit of serendipity in there probably uh the i don't remember exactly but it could be that the the um the way it's blocked out like that might have been one of these things where i looked at it before i finished it or something mm. no i I, I was consumed with the idea of of what was happening. What's happening is is sort of it in reality, but it's also uh, also in the realm of physics and science, and, and that so much of that's going on too. Uh, you know, if you're in that rocket plane, or it, it's a whole different kind of experience than normal life, uh, and and so he's kind of taking the whole universe along with him for the trip i guess and, and let's remind the viewers that that poor guy i'm imagining joe angle just because he's the only x-15 pilot i know well sitting in there in an all nitrogen atmosphere you can't even lift up your visor and scratch your nose or you're going to suffocate wow <laughs> i didn't yeah. know that yeah they didn't for have fire suppression or what yeah yeah wow so because the flight was so short to get away okay we do have a couple of questions now um, first one is from Rob Wingate. Will you describe the process you go through to create your artwork, e.g. research, preliminary sketches? Do you use live models? Okay. Live, well. Um, and I guess that could mean either people or objects, depending on how you look I at guess. it. I uh, guess. Okay, so the, the, <coughs> the live model question is interesting because, you know, like I said earlier, I was a fashion photographer and that, that, of course, is a huge part of that kind of image making is working with another person and, and their talents, the model. Um, mm -hmm. But now I'm, I'm pretty much using people I find in, from stock photo agencies. It, it, but that's very hard. And, and it mm -hmm. takes me a long time to find just the right person, just the right expression. Um, Sometimes right it's kind of inspiring, you know. I find yeah. something that that. Uh, so the process is is similar to to normal old fashioned painting on a canvas. 
uh, except they're doing it all digitally, all on, on a computer, on a screen. Um, but I follow the same methodology where I'm kind of sketching in, blocking in the, the basic idea um, like this. I mean, I, I would be sort of doing a, a really rough, uh, literally working on paper at some point, um, you know, saying, okay, well, I want it going this direction. I want, uh, I'm, I'm figuring out the dynamics uh, of the image and maybe the colors um, and something like this. I, I probably would work from uh, five or six different photographs of of the x15 and again cut it apart cut them apart and then reassemble them uh to get the right angles and perspective um photographs by themselves are often more distorted there's a dog around here more <laughs> distorted than uh than we think uh lenses and all kinds of things make make these things um uh, somewhat distorted uh, or not true. Um, and so I have to adapt for that. And, uh, um, but the whole thing ends up, I mean, I don't think there's a pixel on there that I haven't, uh, touched and retouched and moved around. And, and, uh, so there's a lot of that stuff that's underneath it all, but then the essential, uh, final processes are, are very much just like traditional painting. So we're going to jump back to this because we have a question from Paige Donner. And I think, uh, do I click the answer live to enable her microphone, Ken? Uh-oh. No, she, she's uh, already in there. Oh, okay. Paige, did you want to ask your question? Oh, sure. Um, I, is my, I don't know if my mic is working. It is. I can hear you fine. Oh, fantastic. Jim, this is so wonderful to see your work. So many of the other artists really see you as the, you know, your work as the gold standard. It's it's wonderful to have this, be a listener on this conversation. And Rod, uh, I'm such a big fan of Ad Astra too. Oh, yeah, my question um, for you gentlemen, um, by the way, congratulations on the stamp. That's thank wonderful. You. Yeah, I can't wait to get it myself in June. But, you know, as I'm looking at your, your work um you, i mean it's, it's just so it's breathtaking and i i wish i'm almost thinking i wish i had the experience somehow to see this larger than life which is how the images feel to me mm -hmm. um is there any way are you exploring any other mediums by which your work can be enjoyed that's a good question um it's crossed my mind uh i i do I have put together presentations that are on video um, of of the the still pictures, but there's some movement and, and music and that kind of thing, and I like those quite a bit. Um, but in terms of, you know, I mean, you get, with the right projection devices, we could put them up in clouds or something. That'd be fun. Uh, <laughs> it, IMAX theater would be cool. Yeah, I, I agree, and thank you. I, I like my pictures really, really big. Uh, billboard size is, you know, my idea of a, a wallet picture. Uh, but uh, and that 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 maybe is a place where I run counter to the fine arts people. Um, I used to go to galleries, and they, you know, it, it was really fashionable to have these little postage stamp size pictures. It's huge. Anyway, I. Uh, uh, but thanks. Uh, it, it's something I'm going to continue to look at. And, and if people out there have any uh, ideas or abilities or, or the resources, uh, please give me a call. I was, I was looking at a thing about that huge dome they're building in Las Vegas. That's going to, you know, have was this. That the, the lunar thing? Uh, I don't know if it's a lunar thing in particular. It's a 17,000 seat, like oh. Omnimax theater on, on ma major steroids. Uh, and I thought, oh, that'd be a cool place to show my work. You know. Yeah, that's that's the kind of backdrop I was thinking too for for your work. That they're, they're right. just so yeah, they're just so monumental, wonderful. Okay, great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. No, it's a great suggestion. Thank you. 
So if we have any other questions, please drop them in the Q&A box so I can see them, because I think uh, that's how we're supposed to do it. I have one last f image I wanted. More to hardware. we got to show hardware. No. We're talking to engineers. Okay. Oh, you, you brought this up. I thought. I'd... Yeah. Okay. Because again, uh, it's sentimental. So, so who was this for? Why did you do it? How did you pick these people? Okay. So to, this was originally started out as commission as, as part of my commission work with Ascardia. And, and one of the wonderful things about that assignment was that they basically said, uh, here's some money and do what you want to do and, and send us some pictures from time to time. Um, and that's a pretty cool commission. That's an ultimate commission. And I think they got their money's worth. Um, so this was involving again, the idea of humanity going into outer space and being linked to the earth and, and a lot of different things, but it, it just, coincided I, I got this done and the whole covid uh crisis really kind of hit mm -hmm. and uh it was something that it, it was sort of like a picture looking for a theme maybe or something i i just thought all of a sudden that's perfect um for a a um what a, what would i call it i wouldn't call it uh, uh necessarily a, poster well kind of you know like a i oh, think gosh. i i uh, yeah i made a comment i wrote some stuff down about this and it was like it's a it's a it's patriotic but patriotic for the human race mm. you know and we're all gonna we all have to work together it's it's the i think it's the only time maybe the moon landing interesting enough but but few and far are the times when all of humanity gets together on one project and has one goal and this is one of them um and okay, i so, wanted so is that james duhan and is that nichelle nichols or do they just happen to look like that they just happen to look like that okay uh sorry the questions are stacking up so i got oh good a couple of things uh sean you're up yeah hi guys this is sean boyke your buddy hi james good job thanks yeah, I wondered if we had the technology now, like you do in an Apple phone where you could do a little bit of raster scanning, like a little bit of uh, almost a three-dimensional image. Do we have the capability to do a three-dimensional image from your beautiful, beautiful pictures that are detailed, like you uh, see in an FBI and CIA movies? <laughs> <laughs> or is it like just NCIS, movie fiction? Right? Well, yeah, I, or, uh, again, that's a fun idea, um, and I'd certainly like to explore it. Um, I don't know for sure about how uh, somebody was asking me about holograms and, and true holograms versus whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly it would be fun to explore and look at. I also had somebody contact me about, remember those, those um, ah, there's a name for them. The, the big postcards you'd get on the highway and it would be like a Fresnel lens and you could see, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Lenticular, I think they were lenticular, called. right? They they were asking usually about, of jackalopes or something. Yeah, right, or you know, uh, <laughs> East, Easter bunny with it's, it's skipping through the woods. Um, but somebody did contact me about that. I I need to get back to them and, and cut. I think that would be a gas. That'd be fun. That would uh, be. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So Paula, you're you're up. Well, hi. I got this exhibit, if you will, this presentation, it was just fantastic. And having worked in space community for a zillion years, um, you know, this kind of captures the history of almost everything I can remember, including the first landing on the moon. And so um, it's, it's really, what comes to mind is, is the humanity. Um, you know, we're, we get very involved in the technology and in the rockets and the fuel and, and the strength, but we don't talk about the humanity. And I feel you, you have really captured that in these paintings and especially um, the one about with Neil Armstrong. 
Um, I I got to meet him and make give had, it was a presentation for an award that I was giving to him. And um, your painting of him was exactly the face that I saw when I was handing him this award. Mm. And it really brought that back to me. So it's very realistic and moving. Um, many of these, it's hard to <laughs> select them. I picked uh, um, the Neil Armstrong one because it had a personal impact on me. But um, it's it's very interesting what you're doing and how you're doing it um, because you're capturing something that we don't see. It's all, you know, you have some paintings of rockets and so forth, but there's so much more. Um, yes, that was the one I was talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful photograph, uh, not photograph, but a painting. I really love it. You know, you guys are putting me in a difficult spot because the next time I talk to Jim, he's going to start raising his rates after all this praise. But, <laughs> but it's well-deserved. I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank I you think... for, for those uh, insightful words. So I think Paige and Mike both have something to ask. So let's go for Paige first. Are you there, oh, Paige? thanks. Yeah, you know, actually, yeah. I, 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 was, I left a comment um, conversationally with Sean, who was hmm. asking about the 3D, because uh, I, I do believe there's um, the technology is, is there. I could, I could definitely see some of your work. Well, yeah, as, I mean, I don't, I don't normally do 3D what we call 3d or CAD work. Um, and it, you know, what I, what I'm doing is a, basically a flat surface, but it would be really interesting to see that technology. I, I, that's deep and heavy technology that I just haven't been, had the time to get into. Although it, it should be said, you do, you do source some of your work by working with 3d right. by building your own models, right? Oh yeah. Right. Which is a really I'm, interesting process. Uh huh. And they're uh -huh. big. <laughs> yeah. Right. You. Yeah. Um, I've I've been wanting to do some stuff that's that's. Um, okay. Let's see. How do I do this shortly, Rod? Um, in uh, back in the beginning of the space age, there was a lot of illustration work done about what could happen, what might happen. Uh, it was based on scientific, basically designs. Uh, and this is by uh, uh, Rockwell and Boeing and right. all the big players. Uh, I don't see that much of that anymore. Uh, maybe, you know, beyond sort of, you know, uh, settlements on Mars, baking bread on Mars. Um, it, it, it's not very exciting. Uh, so I wanted to move forward and, and do some more of that stuff in a contemporary and then futuristic way. Um, and so I figured out since I don't work in 3D, I don't create things that way. Uh, I've, I've learned some special uh, uh, techniques, et cetera. Uh, so now we're building large scale models of some of this, uh, these spacecraft ideas. Um, and uh, some of them coming from my head uh, but based on science, based on, on speculation about technology, uh, we're only going about 50 years out or 60 years out. Uh, but that's proving to be very effective and a, and a fun way to, to create the source imagery. So I'm actually in a studio, photo, you know, like, like Stanley Kubrick photographing this great big model and with all the little diddly bobs on it and stuff. So that's fun. Is diddly bobs a technical term? No. Okay. Thing, thingamajig is and uh, gizmos. Gizmo, yeah, yeah. That's that's a whole category. Is like you know a kingdom on to do itself. So Mike Helton has a question. Uh, Mike, are you there? Yes, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, James, uh, thank you very much. These are most amazing uh, paintings. And uh, my first question is very simple. Uh, typically, how long does it take you to do one of these paintings? For instance, uh, the one up there on uh, Neil Armstrong. Whoa, um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't really know how to answer that. And, and that's always a, a puzzlement to my 
to my clients when they ask me, how long is this going to take? <laughs> um, it takes a long time. Uh, I don't think anything I've done has been under a week worth of work. Uh, sometimes uh, it takes a lot longer. Uh, and I, I, I'm trying to maybe just shift where I can work back and forth on, on two pieces at the same time. Uh, but it's all new territory for me. I mean, this kind of illustration and this, the, the topic of aerospace um, has been relatively recent in my life. It, it, I've been doing this now for only about, what, eight years, Rod? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I sort of switched over. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it it's, doesn't take nearly as long as like a traditional oil painting. Which, which will definitely take months. Uh, it takes months for it to dry. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty involved process. Uh -huh. um, uh, what, what kind of cost would it uh, require for one of these uh, uh, paintings typically? Uh, you mean to buy one? No, for him to do one. Ah. Uh. Suppose I had an idea for a space station and I can draw some uh, pen pencil drawings of it, mm -hmm. new kind of space station. And uh, the drawings would be very minor and very. Um, but you, you're getting the idea across to me. And yeah. And so your I painting could... kind of brings it to life. Right. And right. it would allow the author to talk about it in more detail. Uh -huh. Right. And this well, is James's agent. I'd have to <clears throat> say about thirty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> no, sorry, James. Go ahead. No, wait a second. You must be getting a lot of that. Uh, you you told me twenty-five hundred. Oh, I didn't uh, tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, well, that you know that's a good point. And and a lot of a lot of my clients come to me at that kind of sort of juncture in in bringing uh, uh, imagined things to to uh, reality uh, and and that's what I'm particularly good at or try to be good at uh, it is making something look possible look real um, look believable uh, when they're making presentations and, and basically trying to scare up funding uh, so that you know that that whole kind of um, and of course then I have to get involved trying to understand what they're talking about and uh, I, I was okay at science. I was terrible at math, but um, uh, yeah. So uh, that sort of thing is 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 a lot of where I'm involved. And you know, if you want if you want a serious quote, uh, you can get a hold of me. We, uh, my email's on, at the end on the last slide, and and you can uh, query me about that. My base. I'm not expensive. Okay. <laughs> My basic price, I'll just go ahead and say it. My basic price is about 2500 per illustration. And I don't know what other people charge. Uh, I, I do. That's very reasonable. Okay, thank you. Very. Uh, that's right, because you're a, a, a publisher about uh, all kinds of things. Um, okay, and, well, thank you. That, that's thank workable. You. And um, my last question is, uh, uh, would you, uh, have you considered to put your... Uh, Paintings on display at a museum, for instance, the Air and Space Museum. Well, um, if if they if they'll have me, uh, you know, it's it's kind of up to them. And once again, anybody out there who who has some connections, uh, you know, that would be a lot of fun. I'd really like to do that, and and, and more than more than just paintings on a wall, because that's too fine arts for me. Uh, you know, <laughs> like the nice lady was saying. I mean, really big big pictures uh i'd love that with a you know a little little for the kids down at the bottom here's mr b52 and yeah. you know, he's your friend uh well yeah. and jim can i just add something to that which is right you're what's you're been little... frustrating for me working with you these years is your work is so extraordinary and really stands out in a field where there's a lot of good work but Yours is different, and again, I go back to this whole storytelling thing. I've already discussed that enough, but it's frustrating to me how much of a businessman and a marketer and a branding expert and everything else 
an artist slash illustrator slash fine artist has to be in today's market to get noticed even by a stock house, right. which should be automatic. I mean, these are people that can make a lot of money off of the work you've done by lifting a finger and sending an email, and yet it's very challenging. And if anybody out there has got a connection to that, I would uh, encourage you to reach out. Um, I'm, it's, I'm being suggested I, I get your email up there, which I will in just a second. Yeah. But before we go, I want you to comment on Mars because, you know, let's let's close on an optimistic vision of tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Tell me about this one. Well, this, this is a picture of uh, some spaceships at Mars. Uh, how's that? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Well, it's, look, it's we an got expedition. some astronauts here. They're doing yeah. something. It's an expedition to Mars. Yeah, we got at least uh, two ships plus a couple of landers. So right. Like. Exactly. A lot of cargo. And, and uh, yeah, once again, um, I'm looking for a viewpoint, a sense. Well, it, it, it's a it's a um, it's an expedition of discovery on a new land. And. Uh, It's a very, again, the subject matter, you know, it, it's pretty strange and pretty wonderful and, and pretty, uh, it, it's one of the nice things about these things. Is it's got a built-in wonder. I mean, where are we? What, mm -hmm. what are we upside down? Are we backwards? What are we looking at? What's down below? Um, that was one of the, the fun things I discovered was, uh, when I started to do research and stuff, the amount of really beautiful photographs of, of spacecraft, when you turn around and you look, you're above the spacecraft and you look down and have the, the, the earth as a background. Mm -hmm. And, and that was a unique view. We didn't get that in the early part of the space program, partly because there wasn't somebody else to take the pictures. People were in, you know, you were inside the, the Gemini capsule, um, and so it's it's i like to show the beauty of of the geography of these places and, and just how alien they are so and, i've got to uh, i've got to go to your email slide in a second but just in closing i just want to make the point that uh and this is obviously orion going about its business you have kind <laughs> of returned us to a new heroic age. You right. mentioned that word a couple of times. And uh, of course, it always makes me think of the, you know, the last great heroic age, I guess, which was uh, arguably the exploration of the Antarctic. Um, this feels, although I, I picked one without people in it, this does kind of have that, you know, it's flying towards us. Again, we've got the speed streaks and it's this moment of, of greatness as this thing heads off for, for presumably a lunar destination. Uh, do you have anything in closing to say about the new heroic age or the, the greatest adventure? Well, it, it's, it's those things and much, much more. Um, it, it, it's going to be really our, our, our destiny in the future. I mean, we live in outer space already. Mm. And, uh, so we're naturally going to uh, go out there and find out what else is there. And, uh, this, this is the big question often. Um, wh why outer space? Uh, or, and um, a lot of it's just, we, we sort of feel it intuitively um, inside of us. Um, and there's a, there's a whole lot of rationalization or reasons. I shouldn't say rationalization, good reasons that we're out there. Um, the environmental movement um, wouldn't be anything like it is without uh, both our ability to see the world as it really was. I mean, uh, when we got those first pictures from the Apollo flights of, of the earth uh, as a, as a tiny planet, uh, that changed the world. Mm, sure did. Um, and, uh, and now our satellites constantly are monitoring our environment, monitoring the climate, 
we're getting views and information that would not be possible any other way. Uh, communication satellites uh, and uh, it, it, so much, it, it's a vital part of our economy now. And, and it's a vital part of our modern lives. Uh, and, and people are now you know, making profit from, from space exploration with Elon Musk. Those, those guys are in the black. They're, they're, their rockets are making money for them. Uh, so it's, it's part of our future, whether uh, it's going to happen um, sooner or later with, with us or somebody else. Um, it's inevitable. And uh, in some of my research recently for the, this talk, uh, I looked up the, the famous speech by John F. Kennedy uh, in 1962, uh, it, it's often uh, referred to as the, the speech about what, why we go to the moon. Some, some ask why the moon, why, why do this? And it's a, it's fascinating to read the entire speech because it's, it's a homework assignment. Mm. Um, it, it lists, it lists out what, what the benefits are. I mean, he's really selling the space program at that point. Yes. And, and he, he talks about, things on a practical level and what the benefits will be and he talks about them on an emotional level and a spiritual level um, and and i haven't seen a better explanation yet than than what he said in that short speech um and uh why does rice play texas <laughs> because it's there because it's there um, I hope everybody can see this last slide. It's got Jim's uh, email, so you, you might want to do a screen capture while it's up. And you can find Jim's work, besides in Ad Astra Magazine, hit, hit. You can find his stuff at Find Art America, from which I've ordered both posters and coffee mugs. Big on coffee mugs. Some of my favorite illustrations of yours. Tote bags. I'm waiting for the person that, that orders something as a, as a shower curtain. They have that available. Do they have parasols? Oh, uh, not yet. But yeah, I, I think we're I'd working like on a, it. a lunar umbrella. That would be kind of fun. Comfort comforters, <laughs> blankets. <laughs> they got everything. It's it's fun. So have you bought any? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that makes sense. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody for joining us, and Jim, I want to thank you for taking time to share. Uh, the inside information about your wonderful work again I, you know I don't want to gush too much but I am a fanboy of yours and um, you know your your illustrations have transformed the magazine they've in practical terms helped sell a bunch of my books which I appreciate <laughs> and um, you know I look at reviews of space 2.0 which came out in 2019 with your illustrations there's a lot uh, of pictures in there. almost exclusively lots of them and of the 300-something reviews, probably half of them say, yeah, the book's pretty good, but wow, Jim Vaughn's artwork is amazing, <laughs> which grates a little bit, but they're right. Sorry. It is amazing. Ah, it's okay. Um, any closing words for us? If, uh, if I think one thing we haven't addressed is if you're an aspiring artist, young or old, because you know it's, it's interesting to note, Jim, you got into this late in life, and for a lot of people... Uh, you, you see folks that get into to a hobby of art or painting or watercolor or something late in life, and they enjoy it, but the work isn't extraordinary. Yours is extraordinary. So for somebody who's looking to get into this kind of illustration, particularly in space and aerospace, what words of wisdom do you have? Uh, well, I'm encouraging my competition. Uh, and that's good. That's good. Uh, uh you have to love it. You have to be kind of obsessed with it because you, a person needs to be doing it all the time to get really good. It's, mm -hmm. it's like I compare it to like a violinist or Yo-Yo Ma, the cellist. I mean, you know, he's so good because he, he doesn't do the concert, take the money, go home and, you know, watch uh, family guy all day. Um, he's, he's, playing a lot of uh, all the time um and that's how you get really good and and i'm still getting 
better. And, you know, I look at my work from last year and, uh, and, 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 uh, you know, I come up with new ideas for, for speed streaks and, 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 people argue about what they call speed streaks or zip lines or some of you engineers out there know because they they actually what they painted on the uh uh on the livery of of uh, aircraft oh. referred to uh, is a speed speed line i think or something um you know i think i think that everybody I, we need better art better illustrations uh, we could do a lot better. Um, a lot of the stuff I see, um, I'm sorry, but it's not very good. And, and it's kind of boring. How can you make space boring? Uh, it's easy if you try. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and maybe that's part of the problem. Uh, we, we, uh, we need to allow for uh, creativity and, and individual expression and People, obviously, I guess people respond to it. They like it and it helps to sell programs. It helps to sell products. It helps to uh, get people uh, stir their imagination and uh, have something to dream about. Well, I think you've encapsulated it perfectly. And uh, yeah, we're, we're over time. So I think we're going to oh, call it. Ken, you want to come in and uh, give us some closing words? And again, thanks everybody for coming, and thanks Jim for making time. This has been the most time we've spent talk talking about your art ever, and I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Rod, and thanks for your help. My pleasure. Yeah, th thank you, James. Thank you, Rod. This is so amazing, so inspiring. Yeah, I wish you have uh, more time. The Abbey's there are so many more uh, uh, masterpieces in Rod's uh, slides, and also plenty more. Hopefully we can uh, have the chance in the future have a live uh, uh, exhibition, you know, in LA, Las Vegas, you know, uh, James, you know, and Rock can uh, come with uh, join us in person. That would be wonderful. Uh, so thank you so much again. And, and uh, th yes, thank you ahead. for your for your help and your hard work, Ken. Yes, it's James. I mean, I mean, Rod said it. I have the same feeling. You know, it's, it's you. You are very special. It's just very unique. Uh, something different. You know, so uh, definitely well uh, keep it. Um, yeah, I think uh, Colonel Schultes was just saying uh, he enjoyed the, uh, the commentary and the artwork. Yeah, Joe is uh, our uh, AWA associate fellow, and uh, uh, he has been fascinated by you know the, the space art uh, you have been doing, and uh, it's just amazing. So wish we can do it again, you know, online Great. or in person at some point. So stay in touch. Love to. Love yeah, to. wonderful. Stay in touch. Okay, so everyone, uh, glad you uh, enjoy and have fun. So, uh, 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 you know, uh, stay in touch. And uh, we'll send out the link for the video and podcast uh, soon after the event. So appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.